Next question is from Party Boo Hat. What's the difference and or benefits between doing side raises with straight arms versus bent elbows? Oh, good question. Yeah. So, okay, uh, the action, so we're doing laterals, right? Or side lifts for the shoulders. The action of the delt is the same whether my arm is bent or straight because the action of the deltoid is to lift up the, the humerus, which is the upper part of my arm. So then why would I keep my elbows bent versus straight? Well, mm. Really straight arm lengthens the lever, so yeah, whatever lever weight, yeah, whatever weight you're using is gonna be much heavier. The problem is when you start to really straighten the arm out, some people start to feel tension in the top of the elbow, and it just doesn't mm. feel as comfortable as good. And it also tends to, if you know, and I've seen people do laterals like this, it tends to encourage this external rotation at the hand, whereas a bent elbow allows the hand to fall a little bit and helps counter that tendency to want to turn it into this kind of like upright you know, row or this upper back uh, type exercise. Now, do you guys ever play with how bent or not bent your elbow is? Like, do you have some times where you'll go heavier and bend the elbow and then other times you'll go, yeah, go lighter, really with light and strict? Arm. Like, yeah, is there- I Not so much anymore. I used to, but now it's almost always with a slight bend my elbows. Do you guys, how about you? Yeah, I'll, I'll play with it. And that's exactly how the, I'll decide on how, if, I, if it's a day where it's like, I'm just really either touching the laterals or I'm going to, just I'm going real light or just kind of chasing a pump and I'm not lifting heavy. I'm going to go straight yeah. arm, slow, controlled, and all I'm doing is really trying to pump blood into that muscle. Now, if it's a day where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go a little heavier on my laterals, even though I don't recommend going really heavy on laterals because how many people incorporate their traps when they do that, mm -hmm. um, I will. I'll occasionally go heavy on them or heavy in comparison to the straight arm. Um, and that's the time where I'm going to bend my elbows a little bit yeah. in order to do it. I think mainly it's to protect uh, some of those supporting muscles. Like, for example, like a fly. Yeah. A fly, you keep your arm slightly bent too. Now, if I straighten my arm out, the pec is doing the same thing in a fly too, but the tension at the bicep it's gets kind of gnarly. tension in the ligaments. Yeah. yeah, and so when you have a straight arm lateral, I, you know, and I've done this with, I've seen clients come to me and tell me their elbow hurts when doing laterals, and I watch them do it and say, oh, you're, bend your elbow a little bit, and then they'll have less less pain. So I think that's really the main reason why you almost always tend to see it with the bent. Elbow. I wish you, we could like yeah. break down like, um, cause here's the thing as, as you go from, you know, almost completely straight to here, to here, to here, to here, as you go in, you know, uh, this, like, so let's say, uh, this is, um, you know, 15 pound laterals are, are hard, difficult, completely yeah. straight. Um, 15 pounds completely straight is, like doing 25 pounds yeah. here or yeah. doing 40 pounds yep. here. You know yep. what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of people are fooled into thinking that, oh, you know, I can, I'm doing super heavy laterals, but it's like, well, you could also cut the weight in half and, That's a good point. and go mm -hmm. completely straight and get just as good of a lift on your, on your delts as you're yeah. on, on your laterals as you can with the, the heavy. Yeah. Weight. There's something about, I think uh, locked out joints. Like I'm, I'm a little cautious to, you know, train that way very often. Like I always keep a bit of a soft knee or a bit of a soft elbow and yeah. most uh, things just to keep that kind of cushion and, um, allow for the force to distribute a little more effectively, uh, but so even when I'm locked out or like I'm a straight arm in it, it's not completely straight. I, I agree. I'm the, I'm the same way too. Like when I say straight arm, you just mean straighter. Yeah, yeah straighter. Yeah, yeah, it's like almost all the longer. way out, but there's always like a five yeah. to ten degree bend. But I, but I do see. I used to see this with clients that if their arms were too straight, it was really easy for them to do this to rotate externally rotate. Right. Yeah, I've seen. That. When the elbow's a little bent, because now the resistance is in front of the of the arm, it puts them in a more I guess, advantageous position for what we're trying to target, I should say, right? Well, now, can you explain that to me? Because, um, you know, somebody that's not as much of a, a bodybuilder, or like isolated focus guy, like I know that there was like uh, emphasis on like kind of turning the thumbs down at the top. Was that yeah, so the technique? Yeah, this, so this right here, this this rotating of the wrist has nothing to do with the shoulder. This is, this the the, the shoulder does not supinate. But what this down. does is it turns the elbow. Yes. So if you so look that, at the, that cue of pretend like you're, and I think it's an old Arnold, Q. I want to, yeah, it is. Is, it where is, you yeah. pretend like you're dumping out milk or whatever like that. Yeah. All that is doing is it's keeping the yeah. elbow from doing what he was saying. Yeah, because if you look at the where the side deltoid connects at the at the humerus, it's here. So this would be direct uh, resistance when my hand is when my arm is slightly rotated down. As I rotate up, now it's more front delt. Right. In fact, an old school nobody does this anymore. But an old school front delt exercise was actually called a standing uh, fly. Where, oh, I used to do those. Remember those? Yes. Palms like facing up and you come down and come up. Like this is a, a front delt exercise and it's all about where the mm. delt attaches at the humerus. 
So when you externally rotate this way, you're going to get more front delt. And if you start to go heavy, then you start to shrug and squeeze the upper back and you start to get more traps, which if you're interested in power, if you're an athlete, that's probably better, right? Mm. Uh, because you want that that strong, what do they call it? A yoke, right? Up in your upper back. Yeah. But if you're sculpting and you're trying to hit the side delt or whatever, well, now it's all about connecting and feeling the, the target area, in which case it makes more sense. And I know there's people online that say things like, don't hold the dumbbell that way. It's bad for the shoulder. No, no, no. Listen, if you can do it with good stability and strength and control, it's fine. It's any exercise done without good stability starts to become dangerous. That one just requires a little bit more stability. That well, that's the cue that Justin brought. I actually really like that cue for especially teaching like beginners because it's it's harder to explain like internal external rotation yeah, to yeah, them yeah. or try to break down the position of their elbow. It's easier to give a cue like pretend like you're holding yeah. gallons of milk and you're pouring, and, it and you're pouring it out as you get up. Like that just it's a one of those great I think trainer hack cues that is just it's not uh you know it's not technical but it's a a great cue to get people to do what you want them to do totally hey if you enjoyed that clip you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe